they realized it because they kept giving me warnings. And then they was like, man, this man really got to leave. Like, but, uh, you know, because once they, you know, they get your license plate number, they already know who you are. So um, I called my mom and I was like, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to, well, my mom, she called me and she was like, you know, I've come down here for my aunt because she was passing away. So when I moved down to South Carolina, um, really, I saw the prices and everything, and my mom kept hyping up, like, man, it's better than up there. You know what I'm saying? The living is better and all that. So I was like, all right. So I moved down here, and um, a friend, he hit me up, and he was like, yo, I got this job offering. You can work at a desk. You get paid good money. Uh, you don't got to do nothing like receptions. You don't got to do nothing, just greet people. And I said, all right. So I ended up working there, sitting there for like five years. But during that five year period of time, a lady came by me and she was like, yo, that's a cool picture of a dog. And I was drawing like every day, still drawing, but I was trying to make money because I was like, man, I ain't trying to be, you know, homeless again. And a lady came to me and she was like, man, um, can I buy that picture for you for $60? And I was like, yeah. I was like, cool, you know what I'm saying? I was like, you can take it. And then, um, so when I gave it to her, I went home and I was like, man, I can make some money out of this. And I mean, I don't know what just popped in my head because before, you know what I'm saying? My, my, my brother and sisters kept telling me, like, you ain't going to make any money out of it. If somebody get $60 just off of a line sheet piece of paper, I was like, man, I ain't going to fall with this. So I went to, like, Dollar Tree and stuff, and I ended up getting, like, I'm telling you, man, 500 posters. Just racking it, racking it up. You remember, I'm from, I'm from Virginia. I ain't know nobody from here. And this is within, like, a short five-year period of time. And I went, um, I went on their Facebook page. I tagged them in it. And then all their friends liked it. The moment when they liked it, I was like, yo, I'm gonna add all them people and ask each one of them, like, yo, if you want a picture. And they didn't even know me, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, that's your cousin, that's your brother, that's your niece, that's your whoever. And they was like, yeah, man, I like the picture you did for my sister or whatever. And I was like, oh, for sure, I'm an artist, you know what I'm saying? Hit me up. So they was like, all right, cool. Because that, that was the biggest thing. I always thought, told myself, I was like, um, the, the biggest thing in the business, like me, I don't exist in it. Because you just, you know what I mean? You're just a person. They don't care about you. All they care about is the person that's in it, like their cousin or the nephew, and they just care about the painting. But the painting don't even have to be the biggest quality. It's just the person that makes the business go up because that's what they're looking at. You know what I'm saying? So um, after all that, she basically, um, what happened? After all that, um, I tagged them in. I ended up selling like 500 pictures like the first year just by doing that. Just, hey, can I get a picture? Do a, so I do a little doodle of a picture. They just turn around and um, tag their friends in it. I had nothing to lose. So eventually I was like, man, I'm going to start promoting myself and get myself more out there. You know what I'm saying? So um, I started going to like children's hospital. Because I just felt like selling was just one thing. I was like, man, I'm selling art. But that's not really making me. That's not branding me. I need to like have people really like realize who I am. And, and I want to leave a message. Because, you know, anybody can sell. But... What makes an artist is what you represent. You know what I'm saying? You gotta represent something big, bigger than just selling. Because selling is like, you're just taking money from people. In the end of the day, it's like, man, it's a hustle. I'm just taking money. But then I was like, but I need to start like, really helping out the community. I need, I want people to be like, man. Cause like, you know, when you look at entertainment or, or anything, people can name 10 rappers, 10 uh, actors, but they can't really talk about artists. Or you won't see it in magazines or anything like that. So I was like, that was my family, man. My family, my brothers, sisters, they was watching me the whole time. They was like, this man really like pulling it off. And I was inspiring them to go back to art. And, and um, but the thing is, they 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 wanted that fast. They was thinking the same thing I was thinking. Like, I'm making money. I gotta get money. I gotta get money. And my sisters was drawing like beautiful masterpieces, and they couldn't even get it sold. Um. I started promoting myself and I went to like children hospitals, nursing homes, Malcolm X Center, breast cancer awareness, NAACP, I signed up for that. Um, Malcolm, boy, what else? Children hospitals, I mean, foster homes, nursing homes, I mean, it, it was crazy. But really what got me involved in it was um, Rhonda Rollins. She was, um, where I worked at, she was right across the street from the Hyatt. And she used to tell me all her events because she's a community affair. And she's like, man, I got this event coming up, this and third. You should come out there. And I was like, man, I'm going to do it. But I, was, and man, I kept calling him. I was like, yo, first off, you know, in the beginning stage, I was still thinking about that money. So I was like, yo, can I go out there and, uh, you know, 
do a picture for y'all for money. But you know, once you get these big organizations, they ain't gonna really bother with you. They're gonna be like, ah, oh, yeah, I'll call you later. But as soon as you say free or I'm donating something to y'all, they all mad be like, yeah, man, come on. You know, you can do how many pictures you want, it don't matter. But always tell them, like, don't leave empty handed. Just be like, can I get a recommendation, a letter, something? Just, but but it's going to back you up like a lot. You can use that for like proof, showing that you've done it. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I did all those organizations, and then um, eventually uh, I got to eat. Like I, when I did when I went on Ronald Rollins show, I went on two two or three radio stations before I got to Ronald Rollins. So I went down to Augusta and um, I drove around. Went down to a, a statue, and um, I didn't know where the place was at. And eventually, soon I pulled up in there. Um, it was like a regular museum. Went in there, went upstairs. They said, "Keep out." I saw all James Brown um, jackets and his little his hoodie, and not his hoodie, but his um, you know, it, the thing he put over his um, his cape. So I'm like, man, this is dope. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't care, man, because I was like, it's like, man, don't go back there. And I was like, man, I just went back there anyway because I was looking for. Her. I was like, where's Deanna? At? I'm trying to find this lady. And then she was in the back room. And then she was like, oh, I mean, she was short, you know what I'm saying? She was like, oh, and I didn't recognize her. I was like, hey, man, what's up, man? I was just talking to her, and then she was like, um, you the artist? She already recognized who I was, so I walked in there. That also gave me, like, encouragement, and I told her I got the painting downstairs, and I went down there, got it, and um, she was telling me, she was like, man, you good? You could be somebody, this, that, I mean, all that stuff right there was just popping my head up more and more, making me think, like, I can really, you know what I mean, knock this out. Social media is the gold mine. I met um, Nofria, she's Betty Wright's daughter. Um, great personality, great people. And she still keeps contact with me. I did a picture for her. Um, Robin Charles, uh, Ray Charles' daughter, great person, man. She actually tried to invite me to do a tour with her um, in Louisiana, but a lot, you know, a lot came up. Um, Betty Wright, um, not Betty Wright, I'm sorry, B.B. King, um, daughter, she also, I did a picture for her, Tony Terry. Uh, Ronnie, Ronnie Moss from the Spinners, um, Charles Stanford Jr., um, Jesse Jackson, and how that story went. She wanted me to go to the Hyatt, and uh, she said, I need you to be here. Because I, I mean, I'm telling y'all, I've been wanting to do Jesse Jackson probably for like, that was my first number one thing. Cause she kept telling me how much she knew him, and they said a third. And I was like, man, I gotta get to do Jesse Jackson. She, I waited for like three, four years to do Jesse Jackson. And uh, she finally called me like five, Five minutes before he showed up and she said if you come to greenville and i'm all in clemson if you come to greenville in like 10 minutes you, you can meet him and i was like man screw that so i just threw everything on drove out there and then um it was like the line was packed a lot of people was out there and then soon i pulled in there i had my painting with me and then um jesse jackson was like way in the far back ronald rollins already noticed me and um uh, i didn't even want to go in there because i was like man look at all these people they ain't gonna you know, they don't care about, you know, care about me or whatever. And then Ronald Ross, she called me over. She said, hey, Joe, come here, man. Joe, come here. And everybody looking at me like, who is this guy? You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, man, I'm Jesse Jackson's friend. You know what I'm saying? We go back. So I went in there. And then um, um I, I talked to him, spoke to him. Follow, we, we, I walked around him with him the whole time. He asked me a few questions, you know, took photos or whatever. I mean, it was like, that was a great moment for me because, like, like it's it's very it's very inspiring, you know what I'm saying? It's like as a part of history, you know what I mean? And um just to be able to like be part of it, it's, it's amazing. I think the most impact out of the whole journey was really like helping out people that had different cases, like foster homes and um nursing homes, definitely like people that had rape cases and um children on um, babies that was born and died before like a few weeks after and uh, people contact me about those doing you know, deaths and family. Like I, that right there really have a close connection with me because I feel like, man, these people are really taking in my art. And it's more than just, you know, a painting, you know what I'm saying? They, they taking it for, like taking it serious. And uh, that, like I said, that gave me a, a big, huge different aspect of art, man. And um, it's just like somebody, like they always say, like you can, somebody can throw a painting on the wall, a little piece of paint. And people may look at it and be like, what is that? What does that represent? But it, what really it is, it's the it's the meaning behind the, the the painting on the wall. It could be somebody can have cancer or one arm or one leg or whatever they're going through. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's a lot more than just a dot on the wall or a piece of banana taped on the wall. 
You know what I'm saying? It's the story behind it. And that's basically what I want to do. I don't want to really want to be called like the best artist or the greatest artist in the world. I just want to leave a story, y'all, an image, impact towards people.